Good afternoon. How is everyone today? We are here at Friends of God Worship Center at 149 Queen Street across from the 7-Eleven in Tappahannock, Virginia. And this is our uh, regular Sabbath service that we have at 5 o'clock every Sabbath day, which is on Saturday at 5 o'clock. So we invite you to come on down and join us here. If you're looking for a place to worship, we sure love to worship the Lord. And we, uh, if, if you're viewing the message through uh, YouTube or Facebook or whatever media, then praise God because this is the way to get the word out. You know, the devil uses all kind of media to, to entice people and to turn our children around. So praise God, we're going to use the media for the kingdom. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Today, God has a word for you. God has a word for you. And before we get into the word, though, I want to I wanna set the stage a little bit. You know, um, I've always tried to be the comedian, and I don't always tell jokes very well. And a, a dear family member of mine told me once, he said, you know, there are some people that can tell a joke so good and make you laugh so hard. And he said, there are some people that just can't tell a joke at all. And I said, yeah, you're right. You're so right. He said, well, you're one of those people. <laughs> so today I'm going to try to tell a joke. <laughs> it's, it's really not fu a funny joke, though. It's a joke with a message in it. Once there was a monkey who was trying to get across the river. And right beside him was a snake also trying to get across the river. So the snake was trying to entice the monkey to carry him across. So the monkey looked at him and he said, you a snake, I'm not gonna carry you across. If I carry you across, you might bite me. And the snake said, oh no. He said, I really need to get across the river and I don't wanna swim. So if you carry me across the river, I won't bite you, I promise. So they went back and forth. The monkey said, no, I'm not going to carry you. And the snake was just more enticing and more pleading. And so finally, the monkey said, if I carry you across this river, you sure you're not going to bite me? And the snake said, of course not. I'm not going to bite you. You're providing me transportation across this river. So the monkey said, OK, all right, I'll take you across. So finally, the monkey swam, and the, and the snake was on his back, and they swam across the river. And the monkey got on the other side, and the snake crawled down off of his, off of his back. And the monkey turned around, and the snake bit him. And the monkey was just outdone. He said, I thought you told me if I provided you transport transportation across this river that you were not going to bite me. And the snake smiled and he said, but I'm a snake. So, you know, snakes bite. <laughs> now the point to this is the devil is the devil. And I don't care what he tells you and whispers to you and talks to you uh, and, and tries to turn you around from things. The devil is still the devil. And I don't care what kind of promises he makes to you to entice you to do the wrong things. The devil is still the devil, and he's going to turn around and he's going to deceive you. Now, there is a scriptural reference for this. I want you to turn with me to John, the 10th chapter, verse 10. John 10.10 10 in the New Testament. And this kind of goes along with um, what we were talking about with the snake. You know, the snake deceived the monkey and turned around and did exactly what he said he wasn't going to do. But John 10.10 10 explains how the devil does the same thing. John 10.10 10 says, the thief, which is the devil, 
The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. And Jesus said, but I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. But the point here is the first part of this verse. The thief is the devil. Thief means that he wants to steal something from you. Usually, if a thief comes, he's not going to tell you the truth. He's a thief. So he's going to tell you a lie so that he can get to whatever it is that he wants to steal from you. And the devil is a thief. He wants to steal your everlasting life from you. He wants to steal your soul. He wants to entice you to go against the kingdom of God so that you can end up in hell where he is destined to go. So he's a thief. Don't believe him. He's constantly trying to turn us around and put doubt in our minds. So if I were to give this message a title, the title would be, Don't Let the Devil Make You Doubt. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil make you doubt. Because he is a liar and he is a thief. Turn with me now to Matthew, the fourth chapter. And we're going to look at um, verses 1 through, I don't know, until the Lord tells me to stop. <laughs> this was an example of how the devil wants to make you doubt yourself. He's been doing it since the dawn of time. Even in the garden, that was one of the tools that he used to make Eve go against what she knew God had told, her, told him to do. The devil will come in and make you doubt what God says. He, he wants to throw that in there to make you doubt what God says. And once he gets you thinking along that line, then he is, he is very good at just pushing at that and making you think that, wow, maybe, maybe it's not how God says it, it is. Maybe, it's not, maybe I'm thinking wrong. Uh, maybe I understood that wrong. Maybe, maybe I have a misunderstanding of, of what the scripture said. He did it to Adam and Eve. And he did it to Jesus when he came. He tried to make D Jesus doubt himself. Now you know that the devil is off his rocker. You know that he is just out in space somewhere. And he's going to try to entice the almighty God that has wrapped himself in flesh in Jesus Christ. And he's going to try to make almighty God doubt his own word. You know the devil is off his rocker. But... If we look at Matthew, the um, fourth chapter, and let me try to get there too. Matthew, the fourth chapter, and we're going to start with verse one. This is Jesus. Once he um, began, or he came to John the Baptist, John the Baptist was proclaiming the kingdom of God. Jesus came to John the Baptist for him to baptize him so that everyone would, I, would identify with Jesus that Jesus was carrying the same message that John was carrying. So once John baptized him, God acknowledged that this was his son when he sent the dove and said, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. So after that, this was a public display now that Jesus was preaching the same word that John was preaching. So you know, whenever you have, when you're getting ready to go to a different level, when you have a revelation that is getting ready to change your life, the devil is going to try to trip you up before you can get started. The devil knows that if you, can, if you ever get started with what God wants you to do, it's going to be hard for him to stop you. So what he'll do is when you get the revelation 
and you're ready to go to the next level, the devil is going to try to trip you up before you can get started. If he did it to Jesus Christ, he's certainly going to do it to us. So we have to be on guard for his tricks. So in Matthew, the fourth chapter, starting with verse 1, and I'm going to read it through, and then we're going to go back and, and look at these scriptures and kind of examine it. Matthew 4, 1 says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. But he said, and but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the devil the devil taketh him up into the holy city, and sitteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against a stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Again, the devil taketh him up into an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and saith unto him, All these things will I give thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. So here we see that the devil even tried to tempt Jesus Christ. So if he's going to tempt Jesus Christ, we don't stand a chance. We know he's going to tempt us. But the key is that now... We have an adversary, uh, uh, we have a, a adversary in the devil, but we have a champion in Jesus Christ. We have an intercessor. We have someone that is helping us. He sent the helper, the Holy Spirit, to help us to guard against the wiles of the devil. So we have to want to do that. So now let's go back up to verse 1 and let's, let's look at these verses a little bit more in detail. As I said, you know, Jesus was identifying or acknowledging to all of the regions around that he was in line with John the Baptist's teaching. He was identified with the message John was teaching the coming of the kingdom. And so everybody in that region needed to know that Jesus was also in line with what, Jesus, with what John was teaching. So his baptism was a public display of his agreement with the kingdom. Now, we all know that baptism, even today, is a public display. Baptism does not save you. Baptism does not automatically just wash the, the flesh and you never sin again. Baptism is symbolic. Just as it was symbolic with Jesus, it is symbolic with us. It's a public admission that we are lining ourselves up with the kingdom of Jesus Christ. So when he made that public declaration Everybody in the region knew that Jesus was lining up with this, with this message, and so did the devil. Now, the, the Spirit, it says that Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. 
You know, Job was tempted by the devil. The devil accused Job in front of the angels and, and all the heavenly beings. And he told God that the only reason Job served him was because he had a hedge around him and protected him. And he said, just, just let me fool with him a little bit. Let me, let me take some stuff away from him. And I guarantee you, Job will curse you. So the devil tempted Job, but Job came through with flying colors because he, even though he's lost his children, he lost his livestock, he even lost his health, but he still praised God and believed in God. Hallelujah. So the devil thinks thought that he was going to do the same thing to Jesus. It said the Spirit, see the Spirit allowed Jesus to be tempted. He led him to a place and put him in a situation where the temptation of the devil was going to be present. It happens to us too. When we are getting ready to go to a different level, a different spiritual level, the devil accuses us. The devil wants to stop us in our tracks. He accuses us before the Almighty God. And he tells Almighty God, they're not going to make it. They're not going to make it. You just put them out there and take that hedge from around them. Let me mess with them a little bit. They're not going to make it. But we need to know that when we are in the kingdom of God, and he is elevating us to the next level. It's nothing that the devil can do as long as we keep our hands in God's hands. As long as we keep steadfast in the declaration that we have already proclaimed that we are a child of the king and we are kingdom citizens, it's nothing that the devil can do. We just have to hold on. And Jesus was tempted of the devil and he had been up in the wilderness and he was fasting the the scripture said 40 days and 40 nights and it says he was hungry if any of you have ever ever fasted you know that after a fast you are hungry so the point is here though that the devil tries to catch you at your weakest point he waits until you get to a weak point, and then that's when he moves in and tries to throw all kind of stuff in front of you. He wants to tempt you. He wants to move you off of your, your steadfast place that you have proclaimed that you are standing on the kingdom word. He wants to move you off of that place. So he'll wait until you get weak. He'll throw stuff in front of you that he knows that you like, that, are, that is of the world, and you have moved away from that stuff. He'll try to throw that stuff up in your face. He'll try to trick you just like that, that snake tricked the monkey. And he will lie to you so that he can steal your blessing. And that's what he was trying to do to Jesus. He waited till he had fasted and got hungry. And then here comes the devil trying to move and to do his thing. So that it says the tempter came to him. And listen to this. This is verse 3. This, this is what really got me when, when the Lord was giving me this message. It says, and when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command the, that these stones be made bread. If thou be the Son of God. See how he tries to throw doubt up into everything. If thou be the son of God. He knew he was the son of God. But he was trying to tempt Jesus in his fleshly state. He was trying to put doubt in his mind. Don't let the devil make you doubt. He was trying to even make the son of God doubt himself. By the words that he said. If thou be the son of God. So he was trying to say, now I'm not sure you the son of God. Are you sure? He wants to throw doubt 
up into everything that you do. He wants to throw doubt in that ministry that God has given you, where God has spoken to you and said, this is what I want you to do. This is the ministry that I want you to fulfill. This is the work that I have for you in this earth realm. The devil will come to you and say, are you sure God told you to do that ministry? Are you sure this is where God told you to be? Are you sure this is the, the mission trip that God told you to go on? He will try to throw doubt up into every plan that God has for you. You know, he will try to speak to you and say, if it is, then thus and so. Even with Jesus, he said, if thou be the son of God. Of course he was the son of God. So he threw this, this temptation in front of him when he was hungry. And he said, just, just command the stones to become bread, man. You're hungry. Just tell them, be bread. And it'll be bread. Jesus Christ had the power to do that. But he knew that he had a kingdom mandate from God Amen. that he needed to fulfill so that we could have a place in the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Jesus came. I'm so glad that he put on flesh and walked around so that he could demonstrate and leave a record in history of how we're supposed to handle the devil. Hallelujah. So even though he was hungry, this is what Jesus said to him. It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. That word is in the Bible. That word from God is written down in history. But not only that, that word comes into our hearts now because of Jesus Christ through revelation. Fresh revelation in this kingdom time comes through uh, directly to us through the word of God. But it is the word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Isn't that awesome? Yes. Isn't that awesome? I tell you. So now, the devil figures, okay, well, I can't get him that way, so let me try something else. So the devil took him to the holy city where the temple was, and he sent him up on, that, on the highest place in the temple, probably what, on, on the tower or something, and just had him to look down, and he said, again, if thou be the Son of God, if thou be. Trying to cast that doubt. Trying to make Jesus think. Now am I really the son of God? Come on devil. As the, as they, as the kids say now. Really? So he was trying to make. Uh, Jesus doubt. That he was the son of God. But this is what he told him to do. He said cast yourself down. You know. You, you're up there. You're the son of God. You're not going to die. It's not going to hurt you. Just, just go ahead and throw yourself down, you know, because if you do, then, you know, the angels are going to come and take care of you anyway. So just go ahead and prove it. Go ahead and prove it. Just cast yourself down and see what happens. But this was Jesus' answer. He says, it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And, and this is a very important lesson for us. Because we are kingdom children. We are, uh, we live by the word of God. We are in the kingdom. If you have confessed Christ, you're, you're a kingdom kid. And yes, there is power in the word that comes from your mouth when you're a kingdom kid. And you can command things to be and you can command uh, demons to flee. That's the power and the authority that Jesus gave us. And Jesus certainly had it because he gave it to us. But it doesn't mean that just because you have the power to do something that you should just do it just because you can. 
you know, what would be the purpose of Jesus just throwing himself down? There was no purpose in that. There, there, there wasn't a crowd there that he was trying to save. There wasn't anybody that was sick that he was trying to get healed. It, it was just a, 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 a I double D dare you from the devil. And you know, we get, we get hung up in that sometimes. We get hung up in that allowing the devil to double D dare us, to do something that is stupid. So let me, that's another message. But anyway, <laughs> Jesus said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So in other words, you know, devil, I don't have to throw myself down to prove I'm the son of God. Because remember, he, again, he's trying to cast doubt if you are the son of God. So he didn't, he didn't have to do that to prove he was the son of God. He didn't have to do that to prove he had power. And neither do we. We don't have to accept no uh, double, double D dairy from the devil. So here the devil try one more time. Believe me, the devil don't usually come in ones. You know, I, it's an old saying uh, that um, uh, bad things usually come in threes. I think they must have been reading this scripture when they, when they um, made up that saying. Because the devil came to him three times before he left him alone. But the third time, the devil took him up in a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory, you know, the cities and how beautiful they were and all the people and all the commerce and everything going on and the beauty of the buildings. Oh, yes. And he was showing him all of this, the, the glory of the kingdoms of the world. And then he said to them, all these things I will give to God, I will give thee if thou will fall down and worship me. Yes. Mm -mm -mm. My Lord. My Lord. You know, this to me, this scripture right here just mm. proves how stupid the devil is. Yes. Yes. Here is Almighty God that made the worlds, that created the sun and the moon and the stars. And the devil is trying to give, give Jesus a kingdom here on the earth that he don't even own. Now, is that dumb or what? Uh. <laughs> but Jesus, that, by this time, Jesus had just had enough. He's like, he must have, it, it wasn't written in the scriptures this way, but Jesus must have looked at him and said, you know, you have really lost your mind now. All of this belonged to me anyway. I don't know what you're talking about. So finally he told him, he said, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thy serve. So he didn't even address the dumbness that he was talking about by giving, giving him kingdoms that were already his. But his point was, and his example to us was, you don't worship anything else but the Lord God. That's who we worship, the Lord God Almighty. We don't worship a job. We don't worship a car that we have to stay home on Sunday to shine up or on the Sabbath day to shine up. We don't worship a house. You know, you can't sit on the couch because that room is just for company. You know, we don't worship those things. But we worship Lord, the Lord God Almighty. That's yes. who we worship. Yes. Yes. So the devil left him alone after that three times. Mm -hmm. Three times it took for the devil to try to make him doubt mm -hmm. who he was. The Almighty God wrapped in flesh and the devil trying to make him doubt who he was. Jesus. So if he's going to do it to Jesus Christ, you know he's going to come after us. Don't let the devil make you doubt. Don't let the devil make you doubt who you are in the kingdom. Don't let the devil doubt your ability to spread the word about who Jesus is. Don't let the devil doubt that God has given you a ministry that is, is, is going to help somebody to come to Jesus. 
Now, now let me let me just pause there for a minute because a ministry doesn't necessarily mean that you're standing behind a pulpit like I am and giving a word. Your ministry can be of help. You can be helping somebody in your community, in your family. That could be your ministry. Your ministry could be helping in uh, helping someone else to spread the word. Your ministry could be missions and going to different lands to tell people about Jesus. You know, I can't tell you what your ministry is, but God can tell you what your ministry is. Don't let the devil doubt. When the word of God comes to you to tell you what you need to do, and everybody has a purpose. Everybody, Everybody has a purpose. Ooh, and your purpose can't be my purpose. My and my purpose can't be your purpose. No, the purpose that God gives you is unique to your personality. It's unique to your experiences in life. And it's unique to the people that he is going to send you to, to win them to the kingdom of God. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. I'm fired up today. I feel good. I feel good. You know, but in closing, I just want to just emphasize this because it's so important. Don't let the devil make you doubt. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the only way that you can make it to the kingdom is to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord. You have to not only just know who he is, a lot of people know the name of Jesus. They know that, that uh, he, he's a religious figure in history. But I invite you to make Jesus Christ your Lord. When you make Jesus Christ your Lord, that means that you're turning over your life to him. You're turning over your will to him. And you're asking him to come in your life and clean it up. Let me tell you, you can't clean up your life by yourself. Jesus Christ is the only one that can help you clean up your life. You can't wait till you get off those drugs to tell Jesus to come in. You're going to have to ask him to come in and help you sweep things up. You can't wait to get off alcohol to ask Jesus to come in your life. You can't wait to get beyond that sex addiction, addiction that you have, you know, to ask him to come in. He has, you've got to ask him to come in and help you clean it up. Yes. You can't do it by yourself. So I invite you today, if you're listening to this message and you want to clean up your life, you want to get on the right track, you want to become a kingdom citizen of, G of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. I want you to ask Jesus right now. Lord Jesus, come into my life right now, Lord. My life is so messed up and I can't clean it up by myself. Come in, Lord Jesus. Help me to clean this mess up that I have made. I want to turn my life around and I want you to be Lord of my life. Come in, Lord God. I surrender to you. I recognize that you are the Son of God. I recognize that you came and died. You, you shed your blood for me. You hung on that cross and you rose on the third day to establish the kingdom for me. Lord Jesus, help me come into my life and change my life. If you prayed that prayer, then you need to get in fellowship with, um, with uh, a, a body somewhere that is teaching the true, unadulterated truth of the scriptures that is in touch and in relationship with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. You have kingdom authority, but you have to get in a place where you know what your authority is. You're going to have to learn the laws of the kingdom. You're going to have to learn 
what it is that God needs for you to do. What is your job in the kingdom? So you need to get with kingdom worshipers and kingdom citizens so that you can learn what your place is. You're going to have to pray for God to speak to your heart, to guide you to get to the right place. Hallelujah. We just thank you so much for tuning in to our broadcast. And we invite you to come down to Friends of God Worship Center at 149 Queen Street in Tappahannock, Virginia, across from the 7-Eleven. And we just look forward to seeing you here. Amen. <laughs>